All right. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, this special broadcast, we've got our normal uh, broadcast coming up at 6 o'clock Eastern. Uh, and uh, But we have a verdict. We have a verdict in the Derek Chauvin trial. Uh, he was charged with three different counts, uh, second-degree murder, third-degree murder, and, uh, and uh, second-degree manslaughter. So I'm going to explain what all those charges are. Uh, but first, let me be uh, clear. Guilty! Guilty on second-degree manslaughter. Guilty on third-degree murder. Guilty on second-degree murder. Guilty on all counts. So thank God there's a little bit of justice in America. Thank God. So I want to come back and talk about the consequences of, of if it had gone in either direction here. But uh, this is massive news. It is, for a change, really good news. So Derek Chauvin, guilty on all counts of the murder of George Floyd. It's a very important day in America and a very important day for justice in this country. So obviously, it, it, you know, I think the media handled some of this wrong uh, as usual. In the lead up, there was a lot of talk about, oh, what, what, what happens if he doesn't get convicted? Well, uh, basically, they were intimating, if not flat out saying oftentimes, oh, will black people uh, cause violence? No, they will be the victim of violence and the victim of injustice, and they would have had no, alt no outlet for justice, political or judicial. But good news, they, they now appear to have at least some outlet. This was, it was the lowest, lowest bar. The reason why the trial was so important was because if our system couldn't clear this bar, then that would have meant two things. One is it was nearly impossible for minorities in this country to get a, a fair shake out of the system. And also it means that the cops are totally above the law that they would have taken this as a green light for, God, we could choke someone for nine minutes on tape, take the life out of them, have the whole world watch and still get away with it. Now, the good news is that didn't happen. That didn't happen. That's great news. He actually did get convicted. There's, we're gonna, I'm going to tell you in a second, too, what's going to happen next, okay? And so the, the, we're not done with the jurors yet. Uh, they still have a couple of things to do. Maximus sentence, by the way, for second-degree murder is 40 years. And prosecutors have, so, well, let me just get to it. The jury has to decide a couple more things now, now that they've decided that he's uh, guilty. Number one, uh, they've got to uh, see if they're the aggravating uh, parts of this crime uh, apply. The prosecutors say that they do. Uh, and then, obviously, we're going to need a sentence. And so just because you can get 40 years doesn't mean you're going to get 40 years. And so, and there's the questions, of course, about, uh, you know, are the sentences going to be consecutive, concurrent, meaning are they going to be served at the same time? And hence, uh, it, they're only relevant if they're back-to-back, -back, right? Uh, and it depends on how they want to do it. If they're concurrent, that means whichever one was the most serious charge is the is the one that he's going to serve. So we'll see how that plays out because that hasn't happened yet. But let me just quickly go over what uh, all these different charges were. So second-degree manslaughter was the lowest charge. And that it involves culpable negligence uh, where you're taking unreasonable risk and you're doing consciously uh, taking the chance of causing death or great bodily harm. Now, you might not have intended it to be harmful. Okay, so that's important. That's why this is the lowest charge. So, for example, um, and look, these are rough examples. And obviously, in a court of law, they would explain this much more carefully. Uh, but drunk driving, you could reasonably for, a, and, and the law says for an ordinary and reasonably prudent person, you create the strong probability of causing injury to others, even if you did not necessarily intend to be harmful. And then that eventually leads to death, that secondary manslaughter. And, and so drunk driving is a decent example that you might not have intended to cause harm, but a reasonable person could see that that could cause great harm. And if it causes death, that's second degree manslaughter. So in this case, could a reasonable and prudent person think, hey, kneeling on somebody's neck for nine minutes and watching the life go out from underneath them uh, could cause harm? Of course! That's why, again, these are such no-brainers that if we didn't get justice here, it would have been it, it would have been a mighty blow against any sense of uh, and hope of justice in this country. Again, luckily that didn't happen. Guilty on all counts. Uh, the second uh, count uh, was third-degree murder. That's also, all these are without intent because they, the prosecutors weren't tr uh, trying to show that Chauvin somehow knew Floyd and intended to kill him that day. 
and that this was all a ruse to kill him. No, it's without intent, but there are many different crimes that you could of killing someone without intent. For example, in third degree mur uh, murder, you, your actions have to be eminently dangerous, meaning reckless disregard for human life and that it it's a high likelihood to cause death. For, here is a, another simple example, maybe overly simple, but swinging at someone's head uh, with a baseball bat. Or you swing a baseball bat in a crowd and you hit someone in the head. Now, uh, did you intend to necessarily kill the guy that uh, you hit when you swung the bat in the crowd? Not necessarily, but was it highly hi likely to cause death if you hit somebody in the head with a baseball bat? Yes. Or maybe kneel on their neck for n over nine minutes? Yes, obviously. And is that reckless disregard for human life? Obviously. Obviously. Thank God the jury agreed and said, yes, that was, that's obviously third-degree murder. Now, second-degree murder is the hardest one to prove, uh, but the most serious of these charges. I actually think overall for defendants, I, I'm the least comfortable with this because they say there has to be an underlying crime, an underlying felony, and if you could prove the felony and someone dies in the commission of that felony, well, then that's second-degree murder. And and usually the example that's used is a bank robbery. Uh, and in the midst of a bank robbery, somebody gets killed, and that's felony murder, second-degree murder in this case in Minnesota. Um, and so it, the reason why I think not re related to Chauvin, but overall as a general concept, it's a little problematic is because they say, well, he committed the underlying assault, which there's no question that he assaulted uh, George Floyd. Well, the only question is, it was that what a reasonable uh, police officer would do in arresting someone? And, and that's why we were so scared. The jury was going to say, oh, yeah, that's totally reasonable. While you're arresting someone, anyone, by the way, of any race, cops can kneel on their necks for nine minutes, and that's what a reasonable officer would do. Then we were That was the only scenario in which you would have been not guilty on all counts, and we would have been screwed as a nation, honestly, right? Uh, not just for minorities, but for all of us, because that would mean cops are 100 percent above the law and they could do anything to us as long as they're arresting us. Again, luckily that didn't happen. And so they said, no, he is guilty of second degree murder. He was clearly committing an assault. Uh, the reason, again, just to be clear on the why I don't love that law in general is because, yes, if you're killing someone in the middle of an assault, yes, technically you're also doing the assault. I don't really think that that's an underlying crime. I think that's part of the main crime. Uh, but it, it doesn't matter in this case because he was definitely guilty of third-degree murder. Uh, and and as the law is written, there's no question in my mind and apparently in the jury's mind that he was also uh, guilty of second-degree murder. Uh, so uh, luckily, jury agreed on all that. If you were curious what the racial composition was, it was totally mixed jury. Threat, three black men, one black woman, uh, woman, uh, two white men, four white women, and two multiracial women. So all across the board in the range of ages between 20 to 60 years old or in the 20s to 60s. And uh, one more thing about, about Chauvin and, and the trial. One thing that drives me crazy is that um, they, they don't present to the jury the 18 other uh, prior complaints against Chauvin. Only two of them were uh, closed with discipline, as as the police say. Uh, that means in 16 of them, they're like, oh, yeah, so what? Do whatever the hell you want to people. And two of them, they're like, oh, okay, well, there's been a little bit of discipline, but they didn't really explain what the discipline was. So, um, um, so my point is, it's not like this guy's new to abuse. Uh, he, he's done this many, many, many times, and unfortunately, and that's the heart of the underlying problem here, um, Cops are often, uh, you know, immune to any kind of discipline in situations like this. I mean, if you could, did this 18 times, you only got disciplined twice and not disciplined so much that they take you off the streets. Um, well, uh, obviously, there's an issue of accountability uh, with police officers before the crime happened. And when you have no accountability in the previous 18 instances, and they are not as severe, presumably, as what he did to George Floyd, well, it leads up to a severe crime, like what he did to George Floyd, because he thought, well, I did it 18 different times that at least people complained about, let alone the ones that people didn't complain about, right? And I got away with it every time, so that is why he felt so comfortable on George Floyd's neck. He, he felt like he was doing the most normal thing in the world. 
Because how many times has he done that? And how many times has it been considered okay? Well, thank God for all those cameras. I know there's some folks who are so skeptical about everything. And so when the body cams came out and, and the video recordings of people doing it in the streets through their phones, et cetera, started coming out, it's like, oh, it's it won't lead to much. It won't make a difference. No, us being able to see it does make a difference. Thank God for the bystanders that at least recorded it. Otherwise, you know what they would have said. They would have said George Floyd uh, assaulted them. He was resisting arrest. They didn't do anything wrong. And if you didn't have video, Chauvin would have almost certainly gotten away with it, right? So thank God there was video. We all saw it with our own eyes. Th this right-wing talking points now uh, that they had before the verdict was insane, where they were like saying, oh, saying that uh, Chauvin is guilty if uh, Maxine Waters or Joe Biden says it, uh, well, that's biased. No, that's called having eyesight. We all saw the tape for ourselves. He choked the life out of him by putting his knee on his neck, and we saw him die in front of our own eyes. That's not bias. That's facts. What Chauvin did was extreme bias. So, again, guilty on all three counts, uh, and that is great news and great day in America. We'll, we'll follow up, obviously. We'll have a lot more information on this on the regular show. Uh, and that's a six o'clock Eastern. You know, we do it Monday through Friday, every day, six o'clock Eastern. Uh, you can watch on tyt.com slash live. You can watch on YouTube, uh, on our channel. Just type in TYT, any platform you're on, Facebook, Twitch, etc. cetera. And, and thank you to all the members. Thank you to all the people that are commenting. Uh, and you guys are amazing. Uh, I'm getting new used to this new platform, a way of doing things. I'll do more shout outs as we go along uh, once uh, we... Uh, I get a better handle on this system. But here, British32, thank you for the super chat. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate everybody signing up in all the different ways and using all different ways to support the show. We can get this message out loud and clear uh, to as many people as possible. In fact, um, uh, Thane Pullen just uh, donated, I think, over from uh, New Zealand. So thank you so much. Uh, you can hit the join button below if you're watching on YouTube, uh, on on Twitch, you, a lot of you know already, it's it's free if you have Amazon Prime. Please do both if you can, because Amazon Prime doesn't cost you anything to, and you can find out how to do that at tyt.com slash prime. Uh, and, but we get the revenue anyway. They On Twitch, they're calling it Bezos Bucks, so that's great, or at least our audience is. So how about in any way you can? But today, again, I, I just had to jump on here before the regular show, just tell you, finally, a little bit of justice, <laughs> a little bit of justice. So thank God for that. Thank God I don't have to do an angry rant about when and tear our hair out uh, for when are we ever going to get justice. So it's just a wonderful day in America. It, sh it should be like this every day. <laughs> we should, justice should not be the exception. It should be the rule. But at least today we're relieved uh, that we got it. Joshua Banks, thank you so much. Uh, and he said in the Super Chat, Tucker Carlson meltdown incoming in three, two, of course, of course. Filled with racial animus, overtones, undertones, etc. That'll be tonight on Fox News, guaranteed. It's your boy, Chris Fields. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the super chat as well. And look at this. Despo just became a new member. Thank you. Uh, you can do the same by hitting the join button below. Love you guys. Uh, guilty on all three counts. Derek Chauvin uh, sentencing is next. And, and uh, in a little over, in fact, in just about five minutes, Interviews are next, so stay right here wherever you're watching TYT and then the main show at 6 o'clock as well. So check out all of it. Thank you.